Today we are going to do a coolant flush on a 1987 BMW E30. For me this project came about because I developed a major leak in my heater core. I replaced the heater core and now it's time to drain all the remaining coolant and fill the system back up. I decided to replace only the amount of coolant that comes out of the petcock, but if you want to get more coolant out of your engine, you can remove the engine block coolant plug which is located on the passenger side of the engine. So let's start by removing the petcock. I needed a screwdriver to get mine loose. When putting the petcock back, the Bentley manual says you only need to tighten to one to two foot pounds, which is essentially finger tight. So don't over tighten or you'll be buying a new radiator. So with the pet cock removed, hardly anything is coming out. But to make things come out faster, we'll need to remove the expansion tank. And as you can see, it is coming out a lot faster now. So let's drain everything out and then screw the petcock back into the drain hole. Before filling up the system, you'll want to open the coolant bleeder valve. This will allow air to escape as you fill up the system. Now to fill up the system, I'm using one of those no-spill funnels. Not only do they help in preventing spills while putting coolant into the engine, but they are invaluable in helping bleed the air out of the system. Now let's fill the system with fresh coolant. Because this is such an old car, I'm just using the cheapest coolant I could get at the store, rather than BMW coolant, which costs $20 a gallon. And I like to mix my own 50-50 coolant solution too to save money. So that's what I'm using here. The Bentley manual says to use phosphate free antifreeze so make sure to check the bottle if you're not using the BMW coolant. Once the funnel is filled to the top you'll start to see bubbles coming up through the bottom. This is where the no-spill funnel really helps make this job a lot less messy. At this point you'll want to check and see if any coolant is coming out of the bleeder valve, so keep an eye on it. Did you see the coolant come out? Now the system is full to the thermostat housing. So now you can keep the bleeder valve closed so you don't spill all over the place as you continue to fill up the system. So if your funnel is empty like mine, continue to fill it up. So now I've got the system pretty much full of coolant. No more bubbles are coming out on their own. Now it's time to turn the engine on and get the water pump to start pushing trapped air out of the system. Now that the car is running, you should see more bubbles coming out of the expansion tank.
You'll want to continually open the bleeder valve to release any air that might get trapped in the thermostat housing. You only need to open the bleeder valve long enough for a steady stream of coolant to run out. That's when you know no more air is trapped there. Continually check the temperature gauge. You are looking for any spikes in temperature, which could indicate air trapped in the system and possible overheating. If you get any spikes, turn the car off and let it cool back down before resuming the bleeding process. Go check your coolant level in the funnel and see if you're still releasing air within the system. You'll also need to bleed the air that could be trapped in your heater core so turn your cabin temperature dial to max heat, and for good measure turn the cabin air on. You don't need to turn the cabin air on, but I use this to determine how hot the air is coming out of the vents, and that hot coolant is making its way through the system. So at this point, you are just going to continue to bleed any potential air trapped in the thermostat housing by opening and closing the bleeder screw, and you'll continue to monitor the bubbles coming out of the funnel. Once the car reaches its full operating temperature, continue this bleeding process for another five minutes. And that is it. Once the bleeding process is complete, remove the funnel, siphon off coolant in the expansion tank until the correct amount is reached, and then take the car for a drive. After completing this process, I checked the coolant level after a couple days of driving, and the level dropped two inches below the fill line. That is normal as air continues to bleed out of the system. I filled the coolant level back to the fill line, checked it a few days later, and the coolant level has been holding steady. So the job is done. Don't forget to recycle your coolant and clean up any messes so animals don't drink spilled coolant, and happy wrenching.